Hey guys, so I've been working on this one for about a year now and I'm really excited to finally get this out to you. Uh, automatic refrigerated food dosing along with uh, uh, your own DIY uh, refrigerated food. So what uh, kind of prompted this is I wanted a way to automatically feed uh, diverse and healthy foods to all my corals and fish. And uh, dried pellet food and coral food are pretty good options and you can dose them in a dry automatic food fish feeder. But the picky fish tend not to get fed and the smaller foods are really hard to get to accurately uh, dispense. I wanted to be able to feed frozen food and there have been a couple attempts at frozen food feeders um, but they typically require a lot of cleaning, they break down, uh, they you know require a lot of energy and they're big and bulky and just kind of a pain. Um, so I wanted uh, something simpler so I decided to go with a refrigerated food feeder. Uh, the hardest part of this was, by far was getting the preservation of the food uh, done properly. Um, in this video, I'm just going to cover the mechanical side of things, um, but in the next video, which I'll link down below in the description, and maybe if I can figure out YouTube, one of those uh, button things, but that video is going to cover the uh, refrigerated food. This one is going to cover the mechanical side of things, and this is the what I'm going to show you is pretty similar to uh, what a lot of other designs out on the internet have, but there's a couple important differences. Uh, you can do this with very cheap and readily found parts, uh, all under $50, which uh, a lot of the other price tags I saw were $450. So, save you some money. Uh, the other uh, big difference is this uses pumps uh, to feed the food that have a much uh, larger inner diameter to the tubing, uh, 6.8 millimeters instead of 1.6 millimeters. And that makes a huge difference in the types of foods that you can feed. So like I said before, uh, the uh, chemical preservation of the food is going to be in the next video, but just as important as that is keeping the food uh, cold. It needs to be as close to freezing without actually freezing as possible. Um, so for this reason, those Peltier-based uh, refrigerators or superconductor refrigerators are probably not going to work very well because they just can't get you down um, cold enough. I ended up using uh, this uh, fridge from, I think it's the 70s, it's got the brown color of the 70s, uh, but it's a beast, it's a compressor type fridge, and it's down in my basement so I don't care about the compressor noise. Uh, if you have this uh, lying around in your living room or something and, and the noise is a bigger problem, I might suggest um, going with an absorption refrigerator. Uh, these are the type that are generally used in hotels because they're nearly silent uh, but still energy efficient and capable of, of freezing. So uh, they're a little bit more expensive but uh, well worth it. Uh, if you get a mini fridge uh, to make room, you might have to remove... Let's see here. Can you see? All right. You might have to remove the door panel and I just replaced the door panel uh, with a sheet of uh, FRP and FRP is used in bathrooms and stuff so it's really durable and uh, you just pull back the um, pull back the seal on the door remove a bunch of screws and uh, slide the panel out so next we need a way to keep the food suspended uh, the option that I went with and the option that I highly recommend is to use a laboratory style stir plate uh, like this. Uh, this isn't actually the one I use because uh, it's a little too tall, um, but you can make these uh, for really cheap or you can buy them off eBay for around $40 uh, if you don't want to spend the time making it. And I put some uh, plastic beads in uh, this uh, bin to show you how this will work. You'll need a stir bar. You can see it stirs it and you can stir it pretty gently which is what you want a uh, full stir but a gentle stir so that the food is not getting obliterated. So the next option is to use an airline uh, connected to an air pump uh, to mix your food. I think you're going to run into problems using uh, because you have to use an airtight container for this and I think the pump is going to not be able to pump enough. But it's possible you could get it to work. Uh, I think this is also going to oxygenate your food rather quickly so probably wouldn't go with this option. All right, the last option is to use sodium alginate, which I think is derived from seaweed. 
and it's what a lot of commercial products use. Um, you'll have to do your own research on this. I've never used it before, um, but my guess is that you'll still have to shake uh, your food container uh, every day or so. So still, I think stir plate is the best option to go with. All right, so the way that we are actually gonna dose this food is we're going to have a pump inside the sump that pushes water through a line that travels right by and through a T by the refrigerator back uh, to the input of your return pump. And I have this set up so this is all run off a manifold. Uh, so uh, the intake is right next to my main pump which also splits off and runs this line. Uh, if you aren't running a manifold and you run this as a separate pump, this uh, output will need to be uh, next to your return pump to actually get it to the tank so your fish and corals eat it. Uh, so then there's going to be a reservoir of food in your refrigerator and uh, this reservoir uh, by a peristaltic pump is going to get pumped into a tea which then mixes with the tank water and travels into your sump. So that's the general idea. All right, so to actually build the food doser, uh, we first need this uh, feed line uh, from the sump, uh, which I made my half inch uh, flexible vinyl tubing. Uh, there are designs out there, just as a note, uh, that use a dose pump and forgo the, the feed pump, and they just pump out of uh, your refrigerated stock and into uh, your tank and then they back flush that with with water and we can do that too uh, you just need two AC adapters for uh, the pump we're going to use um, but I don't like uh, this method very much uh, because it is you're for sure going to get some tank water back in your food reservoir which is full of bacteria uh, so that's not really ideal uh, if you're really set on going that direction though, uh, you'll just uh, take your, your pump and wire it up uh, to run in two different directions. Alright, so next we're going to need a T and three barb fittings. Uh, my feed pump is uh, using half inch uh, vinyl, so I have two half inch barbs and a quarter inch barb uh, for my peristaltic uh, food pump. There are designs out there that use uh, this. It is a, a Venturi injector, and the idea is that uh, the water flows this way uh, through here uh, quickly enough uh, that it actually, uh, because you're decompressing it right at where the feed line comes in, uh, you're actually creating a, a vacuum there. So even if you ran this uh, without anything connected to this line, no water would come out. Uh, I tried this. Uh, the the uh, holes in this venturi are very small and they tend to get clogged and uh, that clogging actually leads to more leaks uh, than this would prevent. Uh, it's also giving you a false sense of security because uh, as soon as there's no water flowing through here, like if you stop your pump or if you have a power outage, uh, this does nothing for you. So I highly recommend against uh, using one of these. You're also going to need some uh, silicon tubing uh, to replace the stuff that comes uh, with uh, your dosing pump. Uh, this is a couple bucks online. This is one quarter inch inner diameter by uh, three eighths outer diameter. It's food grade and it's uh, very flexible. All right, next you're going to need a high flow uh, dosing pump. This is a cheap knockoff of a Master Flex. You can buy a Master Flex pump, um, but they're not always available or very cheap. And I use this one over a Master Flex because it's small and compact, and uh, Master Flex didn't actually fit in my mini fridge. Uh, so these are uh, 30 bucks on eBay, and I've been using it for over a year, and it's held up really well, uh, considering it's in freezing conditions. Uh, this is about how it'll look when it arrives. Uh, it won't come with the uh, DC plug pigtail, so you will also need a plug uh, that matches a uh, DC adapter uh, that you use. That's going to power uh, your peristaltic pump. 
So you also need a, a food safe container that is airtight. I found this one at Walmart and it has a locking lid mechanism. It's really important that this is airtight and watertight at the very least um, because uh, this is uh, going to be your primary safeguard against uh, flooding if, if something fails. Uh, so you want this to be able to fill with water and not leak all over your floor. Uh, lastly, you'll need a way to control uh, your peristaltic pump. Uh, you can use a timer that goes down to the seconds, which I will link, or you can use a tank controller like a uh, Apex. All right, so next we need to prep uh, our refrigerator. We need to drill a hole in the refrigerator using a hole saw uh, connected to a drill. Uh, I think I made mine eh, maybe a little less than that, uh, about one and a quarter. Uh, inches and the way you want to do this because there can actually be wires or coolant lines uh, not so much in mini fridges but in larger fridges uh, it's very common to have wires or coolant lines in here is uh, drill through the inner sheath uh, plastic sheath and then scoop out uh, the uh, insulation with a spoon or something uh, by hand and then uh, drill through the outer metal sheath so next we need to drill a hole in the lid to our airtight container. Uh, the hole needs to be slightly smaller uh, than the silicon tubing because you need the silicon tubing to make a nice uh, seal with that hole. I think I used uh, 21 64 as a hole size, uh, but I'm not sure. Basically you want um, uh, the silicon tubing to be slightly pinched by the hole, but definitely not kinked. Uh, you don't want it to be a large uh, restriction. I'm not gonna show uh, me putting this in because it's a pain to take out and get in. Uh, next, this is how uh, your uh, pump uh, will come to you. And uh, we're going to replace the tubing that is in here. There's nothing wrong with it, except that uh, you have to connect up to these bar fittings and the bar fittings have a much smaller diameter uh, than the tubing. Uh, this is also another place where you could get a leak. Uh, so we want to avoid this. So to make this a more robust system, we're going to take off uh, the head to this by removing these four volt bolts and uh, replace this tubing with our long piece of tubing, uh, long piece of tubing. All right. So the front just comes off and this will come out and uh, we want to uh, put this inside. So it's a little finicky but uh, keep working it down and you will get it uh, so that it is halfway into the head and then just take the top half and place it on top and make sure that you're not pinching uh, the silicon tubing in the housing and then we're just going to replace uh, the four bolts all right lastly you want to check uh, to make sure that there's no gap here and check on both sides. There's a little bit of a gap on this side. There we go. And you also want to check that uh, your silicon tubing is not being uh, pinched where it comes out here. All right, so I've put the stir plate in the mini fridge and ran the wire through the hole that we drilled. Uh, next, you're gonna put your uh, dosing container for the food on top of your stir plate with a magnetic stir bar inside. And then we want to mount uh, this pump someplace that it's not gonna get in the way. So I just screwed mine uh, onto the temperature control box. And that seemed to work pretty well. The fridge is also defrosting right now. Um, so then after you've done that, uh, take your uh, output 
and stick it through the hole along with your plug for your pump. And then just to try to reduce the amount of, uh, of icing that you get in uh, the refrigerator, uh, stick some insulating uh, material in the hole just to try to plug it up a little bit. All right, so now we're gonna connect uh, that uh, silicon tubing up to uh, this one quarter inch barb. So you need to get the silicon tubing over the barb which I promise can be done, but it might be done off camera. All right, so now we've got our tubing all the way on the barb, and we're gonna take uh, those two small zip ties uh, that we have, and we're going to zip tie the tubing onto the barb so it doesn't leak. So I would stick uh, the zip tie head on uh, one on either side of the tubing. All right, so now we have our tubing firmly attached. You can see the zip ties are uh, digging into the silicon tubing, so we got a nice tight seal. And just uh, trim off the excess. And then push that into the hole as far as it'll go. And then we need to connect our input and output lines. So there's my input. And there's my output. And find a screwdriver. Then we'll just uh, take some hose clamps and tighten those down. All right, then just uh, turn on uh, your water and check for any leaks. And we're all good and we don't have any leaks. Uh, the last thing that we're gonna need to do is to program uh, the pump timing. Um, so I decided I wanted 20 millimeters of food slurry pumped four times a day. Uh, I have a heavily stocked 180 gallon tank and this replaces all my feedings. Uh, so I took a smaller container of 80 millimeters of slurry and timed how long it took the system to empty that container and then I divided by four to get the number of seconds to turn uh, the pump on for. And so that's uh, the last uh, step. I've had really good uh, experience with this. I think it has the possibility of helping those of us with some busy lives uh, to keep some organisms that we have previously had to avoid. Uh, this allowed me to keep uh, non-photosynthetic gorgonians and a copper band butterfly. It also seems like my LPS corals are slightly healthier uh, using this system. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any DIY ideas or comments, please put them in the, in the comments down below. And uh, make sure you watch the next video on how to make the food uh, that you're going to put in uh, your dosing container. Thanks.